Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for April 6th, 2023. Well, yesterday turned out to be a straight up chop fest as we, we got some uh, ADP data on jobs that showed private payrolls falling pretty substantially. We saw the services, uh, PMI services sector, um, shrinking pretty substantially and that left the market really kind of thinking hmm what comes next are we with our economy kind of slowing down and that possibility of recession or waiting on the next round of earnings we just kind of didn't know what to do with ourselves yesterday and just ended up chopping around now what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in and let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Now, I said it's a Thursday edition of the Morning Market Prep video, but it really is our Friday. We have a three-day weekend coming. So how about we take a look at these charts and see if we can get a uh, idea about how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, no big surprises here yesterday with just a, um, you know, a lot of just chopping around um, relatively low volume on the day. And as you can see, as we rallied up into resistance here, um, we just kind of stuck right there. This morning, we've got the diamonds. They're trying to push forward just a little bit. Um, European markets are trying to be bullish this morning. We have um, Asian markets that were very mixed last night and um, seeing right now a mix in the um, futures looking for a mixed open as we kind of wait for some data coming up here today that could provide some inspiration to either be bullish or bearish. Now let's take a look here. Technically in the chart, we've got quite a little bit of resistance above. So if those bulls were to push on through here today, if they find that inspiration, well, first thing we need to do is we need to break this resistance level here in the chart. And if we can do that, then we're going to have to attack this little downtrend area of the diamond. So I'm going to suggest if they can really get going, we might see them come up into this area of the chart. So watch that carefully. And if they were to just really get moving, then um, the next level would be up here. We'd have to um, really have some kind of um, interesting data to push us through up into that level. Now, if the bears were to really engage here, I think a retest of the support down here would, uh, you know, just a couple of days ago, um, test that, uh, that low in there. And if that were not to hold, if we were to fail there, then I think we move back here um, in that chart. There's a bigger level of price support in here. And unfortunately, that would be a really painful move if that were to happen. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY also had a bit of uncertainty yesterday, a little bit more on the bearish side because the QQQ was feeling a bit heavy. And we ran into all of this resistance here in the chart, and we've just kind of slowly backed away from it. Nothing that would suggest major fear here in the market. Volume, again, was quite low. And if we take a look um, how we might perform today, well, remember, we do have this little upside trend in here and that possibility that maybe what we're going to do is just do a lot of resting as we wait for the next um, set of earnings i've suggested that before and we could be in a kind of a wide chop zone here as we wait now if those bulls find inspiration in the data today i would suggest a retest up here to um, see if we can pop that resistance here in the chart. And if we can push through there, then we start looking a little bit higher to these next resistance levels in the chart to see if we can punch on through even higher. If those bears were to find inspiration today, well, you know, I think maybe we may have to come down to test um, the low of this big candle here um for on that first level and if that were to break then i think we're moving on lower to test a um a more substantial level of priced um support in the chart so 
who knows where we go here. Um, I got a feeling we're going to experience an awful lot of choppy markets until the 14th as we wait for those um, those earnings reports. And of course, we begin with the big banks that certainly are uncertain. Then if we look at our QQQ, well, QQQ had the most trouble yesterday, but boy, there's nothing wrong with his chart. This remains the most bullish chart in the market and although we did run up here and hit this resistance and kind of respect that and we've pulled back and we may be trying to test a support level in this uh, chart here today with a little bit of selling coming in first thing um, in the pre-market so watch this level down in here and if that were to fail then we start looking a little bit lower for those next levels of price support and as i mentioned before and we shouldn't be really surprised by this. Um, not only is this the most bullish chart, but it was the most overextended. And that possibility that we could just kind of build a range here, um, coming back into that trend, waiting for the next round of earnings. If the bulls find inspiration here today, then I would suggest a retest of that resistance here that I have marked so watch that close and then if we look at our IWM well IWM remains the most bearish market out there certainly showed a little bit of pressure yesterday and we ended up closing just below this big bearish downtrend break um, that brought in a lot of hope so just kind of close that down just below there maybe raising some uncertainties um, in that chart and remembering price patterns usually suggest when we make lower highs the the real possibility is a uh, lower low could be coming in the IWM now of course we could just retest this support here because this is a pretty solid support and bounce right off of there um, and, and not make a lower low, but that's something we do have to consider on the price pattern. Now, looking in here, you can see we've got a little bit of bullishness trying to push this up here in the pre-market. We may be trying to hang on and hold in here. But it's not so much um, to really suggest that um, that's a for sure thing. It, anything is possible by the open of the day, remembering that we've got some economic data coming our way today that could inspire either the bulls or bears. So watch that one. Then if we take a look at our VIX, boy, our VIX. VIX is awfully perplexing here. Certainly there is lots of uncertainty out there. You probably saw the reports that we have record inflows into money market funds. Folks are moving massive amounts of money into money market funds to reduce the risk um, in their accounts. And well, at the same time, we're seeing the VIX is saying, hey, there's no fear here at all. Now, I don't know, uh, this seems to be acting very, very oddly here to me um, with the uncertainties that we see in the market. But that being said, if we can find some bullish action here in the market, we may drop right below that price support here, suggesting that um, nobody nobody's worried. Um, doesn't seem to be the case when we see record outflows um, or record inflows, I should say, into money market funds. So um, take that for what it is, um, uh, kind of some uncertainty uh, about what's going on. Um, if those uh, bears were to engage, we'll then look for this area in here as a place for a bounce. But what we've seen lately, it, it really doesn't it really doesn't matter um, we don't we're not getting much price action out of the VIX and I don't quite understand what's happening here if we take a look at our um, t2122 now the t2122 indicator did have just a little bit of price action in it that pulled us back toward that mid range again we bounced around in here a lot yesterday um, so we're kind of around this mid range in the chart so remember t2122 does not tell us 
what direction the market's going to move. What it does is it tells us where those pressure points when we reach overbought or oversold conditions in the market. So if those bulls can find inspiration today, well, we've opened up a pretty good opportunity for those bulls to push if there's something in there that can get them going. But if the bears find inspiration today, just keep in mind there is also a pretty good size potential for a downside move if we find uh, that inspiration. It is entirely possible that we could just try to straddle the fence here and, and wait um, uh, for um, some data or be thinking about that three-day weekend and just seeing volumes declining pretty sharply. So um, kind of keep that in mind. If we take a look at our T2107, well, T2107 declined just a little bit yesterday, but I don't think there was anything in this chart that would suggest, you know, um, terrible bearishness or, or, or major concerns. Certainly, we're following that trend, but we have found some price support in here yesterday. We kind of held on in here. Um, we've got 42% of our stocks holding above their 40 or 200 day moving average. If this were to get much worse and we were to break down through some of these levels, then maybe some fear will come up in the market. But for now, um, I don't see anything in here that should create a whole lot of panic. T2108, very much the same thing. This is the percentage of stocks holding above the 40-day. 31, 32% of the stocks holding above their 40-day their moving average. Um, you know, I get the question all, all the time. 40-day moving average. Why did they pick 40-day moving average? And you know, Nobody called me. Or it would be the 50-day <laughs> moving average. But um, that being said, um, as you can see, we've pushed down here into some price support. Um, haven't broken any support levels. I don't think there's any major concern there. Clearly, we have been respecting this downtrend and we've got resistance above. So we seem to just be a little bit stuck here um, at the moment. And I think it's understandable with the uncertainty of earnings um, on the 14th kicking off and everybody wondering what's going to happen. So watch watch that one. Then let's take a look at our T2101. Well, T2101 continues to show us that that momentum that we saw that pushed the markets up so strongly is kind of diminished and we're respecting that resistance level in the chart. We're just kind of drifting um, around here waiting for some kind of inspiration to get us moving. And of course, we saw those charts just lots and lots of um, light volume trading here as we chopped around so i think we just have um, we have that uncertainty that's just making people nervous um, they're not sure what to think about what to do and um, when we look at our economic calendar um, there is some reason to maybe have a, even a little bit of an extra dose of uncertainty heading into this three-day weekend. First off, let's talk about what we've got this morning. We're going to get those jobless claims this morning. And so far um, this week, we've seen the job op openings report decline pretty sharply. We've seen ADP private payroll numbers decline pretty sharply. So maybe we're starting to see those jobless claims really start to pick up and increase. Now, remember, that's what the Fed wants to see. So it is possible a bad, uh, you know, bad number for people out there if the jobs really start, claims really start coming up then that would be a good thing for the Fed. And we might honestly see that as a bullish sign here today. So watch carefully for that. Um, we have James Bullard out there speaking. He, he uh, used to be considered kind of the most um, hawkish um, of the Fed members. Now I think um, that title goes to Mester, who says uh, we're going to 5%. We're going to stay there for a while. We'll see what... Draw, um, um, uh, James Bullard has to say here at 10. We've got a natural gas report, unlikely to move the market much. We've got some bond auctions and then the Fed balance sheet later on. Um, I think, you know, once we get through this, everyone's going to be kind of thinking about this number. They're going to be thinking about that employment situation number and how to position themselves 
um, with the market being closed on Friday and that number coming out. What that kind of what that means is if if this is a number that creates a big reaction in prices, well then just kind of keep in mind we're going to have to absorb that move on a Monday morning gap. That Monday morning could be a gap up, a gap down. Um, your guess is as good as mine. But think about that carefully and think about that risk that you're taking going into this three day weekend with this number hanging out there. And we will not be able to react to it until Monday. So could be um, pretty interesting Monday morning. So think about that carefully, plan your risk carefully um, heading into this long weekend. Let's take a look um, at some stocks that could be, um, or, or on the um, earnings calendar here today. And on the earnings calendar, we, we know that we're just very, very light on those earnings right now. And no big surprise, um, That's that happens every quarter this time, uh, you know, as we head into the major uh, big bank um, earnings. But we do have some notables here today. Um, let's take a look. We've got LW on the list today. Keep an eye on that. Looks like that's pushing on higher here this morning. One of the things we've been seeing as a theme um, in right way options is a lot of this consumer defensive stocks. Um, showing really strongly. We'll talk a little bit about that here in just a bit, but um, LW moving up nicely. Take a look at um, Levi Strauss. Levi Strauss reporting today. Looks like we're kind of getting a little bit of back and forth here, a little spinning top doji uh, going on in here, a little bit of uncertainty maybe. We're going to hear from um, RPM today. RPM looks like, um, well, it's having some um, bad news here this morning apparently and uh, at least the reaction is bad breaking some support levels here on RPM we're gonna hear from Constellation Brands whoops um, Constellation Brands will be reporting today and looks like we got a little um, popping around here but nothing major here on Constellation continuing in its downtrend at least at the moment and then we have um, WD 40 WD 40 um, will be reporting today not seeing any pre-market activity in here but it has tried to rally toward this earnings report and you know who doesn't have wd-40 in their house i mean if you have one can you probably have four five six seven um, everybody needs a can of wd-40 right so watch that close let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that guys just once again if you could do me that favor here if you could click that thumbs up button um, on these on this video uh, make sure you click that subscribe button make sure you leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow and I want to say thank you so much to everyone who does that and thank you for everyone who goes through those comments and adds that extra thumbs up to those because it's the engagement with video that makes a difference and I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time you guys um, truly truly um, are awesome we're, we're creeping up toward those 30,000 subscribers and, and um, I thank you so much for that support let's take a look at a few stocks setting up um, remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security you've got to do your own due diligence be very very careful here in this market we still have that potential for some very big point moves and some really big whipsaws um, intraday so just kind of be careful here don't over trade this market because that uncertainty of all of these things kind of creeping up will be building up to um, a potential big explosion of activity uh, right around the 14th when we start those big bank earnings um, uh, a chart that I added an alert to yesterday um, is Disney if you take a look at Disney here there's my price alert nice little upside move going on here we're breaking that downtrend holding the those higher lows we're holding a nice support level in here let that consolidate over into that trend and look for that opportunity so I've placed a price alert there on Disney um, I also placed a price alert here on emerging markets now had a little bit of selling coming in there yesterday um, may falter here just a bit but you can see this trend we may have that opportunity that this could still hold this price support in here might widen that range a little bit here in chop and it may slip past that trend a little but watch that in here for that opportunity uh, for that to maybe move higher here on EEM might be worth keeping 
keeping an eye on or putting it on a list. Take a look at uh, Palo Alto. Palo Alto continues to be a nice looking chart. As you can see, I had an alert in here. We popped through and now we're just resting back into that support area. We've got a um, kind of a shallow upside trend going on here, but watch for that next opportunity that may be coming up here in Palo Alto. Um, Spotify has been on my list. And once again, we popped through my alert and then this uncertainty in the market that that we're seeing it's just bringing in that well uncertain chopping price action so we pushed back into um, that support area and possibly this trend look for that next opportunity if we can find that bullish inspiration here in the market maybe we can push on through um, into those areas as you know i've been talking about crwd here for a long time and boy crwd got smacked yesterday so we've been moving up in this nice uh trend here it's been a little bit on the choppy side and it's certainly been slow and grinding but um, now i'm i'm gonna have to say crwd got to go on the back burner for a little bit um, let this consolidate see what it's going to do uh, before I would be too um, interested in getting um, along in that. Take a look at uh, wind casinos. Some of the casinos have been kind of floating back and forth here. And this uncertainty that's been coming into the market has been having a little bit of a negative effect on some of these. So watch that closely. I've been talking about this for the bull side, but you can see we kind of slipped yesterday below that um, support level here again. So watch that carefully. If the economy is slowing, we certainly could see these casinos start to be impacted on that. So keep a close eye on that. Take a look at an XLF. Um, I think the financials um, are, are, are just struggling here. And I could be absolutely wrong, but uh, I am short here on XLF and I'll be watching this uh, heading into those earnings reports. Uh, by the way, I will be out and closed out of this position before the reports start, but I think there is that possibility that we could, um, over the next week or so, just kind of catch that drift to the downside here in XLF with that uncertainty about how they may report. Obviously, this is a very bearish chart in the short term, so um, it is worth keeping an eye on. Um, so with that, guys, I'm going to cut this video off today because I'm, I'm running a little bit long. Hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day in your trading and more importantly, a wonderful weekend. Um, obviously, this holiday is here for a reason. If um, if you are um, a believer out there, this is a very important holiday for you. And um, I want to wish you all a the very, very best on um, Good Friday and as we head into um, Easter. So um, everyone take care. Be safe out there. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend with your, your family. Um, market will be here when we get back on Monday morning and probably be just as, um, just as challenging for a while. Um, as we approach that um, those earnings events. So I um, want to wish you all the best and see you bright and early Monday morning. Thanks, everyone. Take care.